Are you moving to Augusta, Georgia and you absolutely want to know some inside secrets about the area? Well, I'm talking about the seven things I wish I knew before I moved to Augusta and I'm starting right now. Hi, I'm Kimberly Lahadney with the Georgia Coast Homes team and Keller Williams in Augusta, Georgia. And today we're talking about seven things that they don't really tell you before you move to Augusta, Georgia. And these are things I wish I knew because I moved here not knowing very much about the area. And it was important that I knew some of these key cultural things that make living in Augusta different from anywhere else you can live in the United States. And just like you, I moved from out of state and maybe worse, I moved from California. So I definitely needed to know these seven things before I got here. And you're gonna think, well, these are just minor cultural things. Why do I need to know these? But I'm telling you, it makes a world of difference when you realize that the people who live in Augusta take these seven things very seriously. And the first one is gonna be no surprise. Number one, golf and golf cart culture. Okay, so for those of you who have watched this channel for any length of time or you're familiar with Augusta or your golf enthusiasts, you know that the Super Bowl of golf takes place in our city every year, the same week in April, and that is the Masters. Well, this has developed a bit of a culture around golf. And if you're not a golfer, it doesn't really matter because you're golf adjacent, which means you might have a golf cart. You may use it to go pick up your kids from school. You may use it to drop by a friend's house on a party night or just because. And you may find yourself involved in a golf cart parade. Now there are other places and other regions that like to make use of the golf cart. I can think of maybe Arizona, uh, 50 and older communities. Around here, no one bats an eye if you're like, hey, you know what? I need a golf cart. Augusta makes it really easy for you to get a golf cart. The reason for that is that we have the two biggest golf cart providers in our area, Easy Go and Club Car. This also means that golf courses around the nation will send their used golf carts to us. So people buy them up, soup them up, and will resell them for a good deal, but they'll have all kinds of different things like huge monster truck wheels, sound systems, I mean, party lights, you name it. I mean, this is a thing. So there's one caveat though. If you live in a golf course community and you belong to the golf course, and you think, hey, I'm just gonna use my golf cart on their golf course, eh, you can't do it. Uh, they have their own rules, and if you've put special tires on there or something that can tear up the turf, they just don't wanna take the risk. So your golf cart is really for the fun of your family and for enjoying your neighbors and, again, getting involved in those community golf cart parades. Number two. If you are not an SEC football fan before you get here, and for those of you who don't know anything about football, that's college football, but Southern college football, the Eastern Conference, you better get on the horn and figure out what team you love because this is second level stuff. People know their football, people root for their teams, they get on the bandwagon if they don't have a local team that they're into. So the big ones here are the Clemson Tigers and the Georgia Bulldogs. And there are other colleges you can get really excited about like Vanderbilt, Auburn, Old Miss. It runs the gamut. But the reason why you need to know about SEC football, even if you're not a football fan, is that everything here revolves around game night. There are huge parties. There is golf cart party lines. There are decals on people's cars. There are flags. There is lawn art. I mean, people are excited about this. And it goes so far as to knowing how to have a conversation at a party. When I first got here, I went to a little girl's birthday party of a neighbor. And there were these petite, beautiful Southern Bells 
all sitting around drinking wine and talking football. And I, and I don't mean just talking football, I mean talking players and when's the next tailgating and is COVID going to affect just the season altogether? I mean, it was incredible. And I, I felt very out of place because I love football, but not like this. So it's something to know about and get excited about if it's your thing, get excited about it if it's not your thing, and just get ready to have a good time. Know you're gonna be invited at some point to a college football party and pick a team, get the colors, and get ready to go. Number three, etiquette and junior league and cotillion. Whew, we are in the South. And in the South, we have manners. Cotillion and etiquette classes are real deal for your children if you're moving to the South. Now you can choose to participate or not participate. Totally up to you. There are adult classes for those who want to learn more about how to operate in polite society. But for our children, this is such a serious coming of age event that little girls and little boys are paired off even in pre-k does your little daughter have a partner yet for etiquette classes we're talking partnering them before they even come close to start taking classes because most kids start taking etiquette in fifth grade so get ready because if you have a daughter especially there are going to be moms that approach you and you will be shocked. So why is this a thing? Well, Augusta is very much still part of that Southern society and cotillion and etiquette and junior league is important. It's so important, in fact, that they learn their table manners. They learn how to operate in polite society, in their business life, in their personal life. They also learn how to partner dance. And this is such a big deal, and people in Augusta take this so seriously that at state colleges, girls know to ask an Augusta boy to a dance or a mixer because he actually knows how to dance because the Augusta Junior League takes it so seriously. If you are fascinated by this aspect of Southern life, if you wanna learn a little bit more about etiquette classes in Georgia, I actually have put the link to an article below. Click on it, read up, and get ready because it will be an eye-opener for you. Number four, Southern food. When I first moved here, I felt like I had a huge challenge. I needed to find out why everything was fried. And so I asked a local, what is the deal with comfort food? How did Southern fried food come to be? And she sat me down and she said, look, back in the day, people worked the land and they would come in for lunch or come in for dinner and they'd still have a couple more hours to work. It was essential that they kind of put some meat on the bones so that they could work it off in the fields. Now we just have incredible Southern cooking that is full of calories just for the thrill of it because not all of us are gonna go work the land for another three or four hours after we're done eating. So it's something to keep in mind but it is incredibly delicious. And we do benefit from being so close to South Carolina, which is notorious for South Carolina barbecue. So you do get some great barbecue as well. It's something to look forward to. It's also something to keep in mind if you're trying to keep the pounds off. We've now arrived to one of the most interesting aspects of living in the South, and that is front door bling. What in the world is front door bling, you might ask. You might be like, Kimberly, I don't care. I don't even want to know what this is. Well, I don't know if I came up with that term. It's not necessarily something you can Google. But this is art that you hang on your door that is not a wreath. And it can have all manner of themes. It can be extremely artistic, but it is everywhere. It can be signage, it can be a welcome, it can be something that is holiday themed. It runs the gamut, but it's kind of crazy. It's a little bit expensive, but once you have it, you have it for life and you use it year after year. And if you have two front doors, 
you will often have to purchase two or do something that complements and tells a little story. So you might be not interested in this at all, and I totally get it, especially if you're a guy, you're like, I'm not gonna hang anything on my door, or maybe I'll let my wife put a wreath on the door, because that's totally acceptable. But honestly, it's a little addicting, and when you're here, you feel pulled into the temptation of getting some kind of signage or some kind of art for your front door. And I have to say that I'm guilty I had my third child once I got here and I couldn't resist getting a cute stork with a baby and a little verse on it to hang on our door. And I, I don't regret it. So get ready. It's a thing. Door bling. Number six. This is door bling adjacent. And that is the deep, deep, deep love of monograms. Now, I don't know where you are in the age spectrum, but believe it or not, I'm still of the generation that my grandmother got our monogram put on all kinds of sweaters, shirts, and jumpers, and then made all of her grandkids pose for pictures. Well, monograms are still a huge thing here in Augusta, and you will often see it on people's doors with their door bling, or you will see it on their shirts, or on their necks, or on their cars, in fact, the other day I saw it on someone's Uggs. I'm not kidding. I believe I have a picture. She has her monogram on her Uggs. It is beautiful. I love monograms, but they take this to the next level. You will see it everywhere. And you'll even see it on guys' cars. I mean, I was passing this car the other day and there it was, his monogram on the back of his car. So. You know, everyone wants to be known, and this is another way you can make yourself known in Augusta, Georgia. Number seven. Now this is my favorite, favorite aspect of living in a Southern town, and that is big front porches. But here in Augusta, your front porch is almost like an extended living room. And this is where I think Augusta takes things to the next level. And maybe another Southern town does something similar, but I don't live there. I only live here. And what I have found is that people get outdoor rugs. They get beautiful outdoor furniture. They even have lamps that they turn on when they are using or not using their front porch. People have done incredible design jobs for their front porch. People will even redo their whole front facade of their house to make their porch bigger. And, you know, I, I say that people use them or don't use them, but the majority of people who have front porches do use their front porches. I have a wonderful set of neighbors that every evening they come outside, they turn on their little lamp and they both read together rain or shine. So front porch living is really beautiful. You can have a swing, you can have rockers, you can have comfy patio furniture. Whatever your style, just own it and do it. And if you don't have a front porch, think about building one. If you've enjoyed this and you wanna know more about living in Augusta, click here and find out the pros and cons about Augusta living. Thanks for dropping by.